Okay, so when um, animating, um, it's important to move through separate stages. Um, there are five, essentially five important stages. The first one is to design your layers, okay? So often in Illustrator or another package, another application, you'll create the actual design of the layers, what, what appears on each layer. Then you'll import those layers into Animate, into After Effects, should I say, or Animate. Um, we're talking about After Effects at the moment. Animate them, okay? Animate each layer separately, and then importantly, sequence the layers. So that's where you decide how, you know, what order the layers are going to play in over time along the timeline. So which is going to play first, second, third, fourth, etc. Um, and how they're going to overlap. Then review it, so watch it through. And then the final stage after the review is to then tweak the timings of each of the layers. So like we did with the plane animation, looking at the keyframes on the timeline and tweaking them, adjusting them. Do you want to speed bits up, slow bits down, etc. And then getting to your final um, you know, finished uh, animation. Okay, so it's important to remember those five stages. Design the layers, animate them, sequence them, review them, adjust and tweak them. Okay, so just going back to what I was saying about designing your layers. So um, if you open up the um, basket um, Illustrator file, the asset that um, you should have downloaded from Teams, open that in Illustrator and you'll see that we've got this uh, carefully illustrated uh, asset here with um, different items in a shopping basket. If you look over to the right and click on the Layers panel, you will see that each of these key items so it's a basket or the items themselves are on a separate layer so that's very important for animation anything that you want to same as with animate anything that you want to separate needs anything that you want to animate should I say needs to be on a separate layer okay okay so for this um, exercise we're going to have a look at animating and particularly using some of the um, properties of the different layers um, we're gonna so I'll just scroll through so this is what we're going to produce we're going to produce it little sequenced animation um, and these items um, animating in different ways uh, over 10 frames um, so you can see on the on the timeline here uh, and the various settings expanded there okay so the next thing is to open After Effects okay we want to save this project we want to create a project so file save as um, now before this if you create a folder again like we've done with previous projects and if you call this one basket animation okay uh, put once you've imported and downloaded the asset the shopping basket illustration asset from teams put that in the shopping basket animation folder okay so when we save the project we want to save it in that same folder so if we go to file file save as Navigate to that folder. Okay, save into there. Okay, so importantly, the project and the assets are in the same place. We now want to import the the asset in, which is the separate layers that we created in Illustrator. So, like before, if we go to right-click in the project panel, import file. Again, navigate to that uh, folder we've just created. And then if you select the animation, so before you, you import, just click on the, the Illustrator file. It's called Basket. Now, importantly, if you go down to Import As, if you remember, don't select Footage. You want to click on the drop-down and select Retain Layer Sizes, Composition Retain Layer Sizes. Okay. Uh, you can also, where it says import options, if you click where it says um, create composition and then that will automatically import those layers in and create a composition. Okay, so we've imported our layers in. So if we now double click on the composition and that will place the layers in the uh, layer panel here we can see everything on the timeline um, we just want to check our uh, the the duration of our composition so if you right click 
on uh, the composition in the project window select composition settings um, and just remember that it sets the duration to whatever that your previous project was so if you go to duration here just make sure if it's not five seconds type in 500 so five for the seconds and 100 for the frames and if you okay that then that just ensures that your um, your composition is five um, seconds long okay okay so we want to we've got a black background at the moment we want to if we wanted to change that so I'm just going to show you how you can you can alter that color um, by creating a new layer so if we right click on in the composition window here go to new and solid okay we can choose a any color we want here I'm going to go for a kind of purpley magentry color um, select our color okay it and you'll see that creates a new solid uh, color layer uh, it puts it on top so it obscures over all the other layers so we just want to drag that down so it's underneath the the other layers and then lock it so again similar to, to how we used to work in uh, animate okay so now we want to um, show and hide or the terminology that's used in After Effects is solo certain layers so the two layers that we want to solo are the background layer and the basket layer so if you see where I'm clicking here under on the layers panel underneath this dot here that will solo the basket and the background layer so they're the two the only two that are visible so so to solo means to show okay so the next thing we want to do now is um, once we've uh, soloed the layers we're concerned with um, we want to start to animate the uh, basket okay so if we move the playhead to 10 frames first of all okay and then we want to insert two um, keyframes here uh, we're going to change the position and the scale so if we select the basket layer and press P uh, that will show the position uh, properties now if we want to show, show a second set of properties if I press S for scale it just switches to scale and the P doesn't show at the same time so if I press shift and P once I've pressed S, that will re-show position. So we should have position and scale showing. Okay, and then to insert keyframes at um, 10 frames for both of those properties, if you click on the position timer and the scale timer, you'll see that the keyframes will appear. Okay, and then if you move the playhead back to zero, okay so first we're going to um, change the position so um, and you can zoom out so if you hold down control and use the mouse wheel you can zoom out so you can see the areas outside the uh, stage as well or outside the where the action's happening uh, if you hold down shift and click on the basket uh, sorry click on the basket and hold down shift that's important to do it in that order so select the basket and then hold down shift that will constrain the drag so if you now drag the basket down off the state off stage bottom okay and that will change the position of the the basket you'll see here in terms of the x and y coordinates um, we also want to change the scale so we're going to reduce the scale down from 100 um, so if we click on 100 if we take it down to about 30 okay so we've created that animation we've animated the scale and the position of the box over uh, 10 frames um, so what can also be useful is just to limit the the work area so when when we're because if I play this at the moment to test it it's going to play for the whole uh, five uh, seconds which we don't really need because our, our work area is concentrated in these first few frames so what we can do is we can adjust that by um, limiting the work area to one second so if we move the playhead to one second by pressing N, so first of all move the needle to where you want to limit the the um, work area to. So if you look here where it says 1.00, that's actually the first second. So if we move the needle to there, press N, and you can see this area here, this defines the, the, um, the play area or the work area. So if I now press spacebar to play, you see it stops, well, it repeats over that, for that first one second okay so that can be a useful uh, little device to use um, also another little useful shortcut is when you're dealing with layers if I just compress the basket layer now if I want to see the keyframes 
on any particular layer that or the keyframes that have been altered should I say if I press U you'll see that it shows the position and scale keyframes that have been altered okay so that's a useful little short okay so we're now going to move on to the oranges layer um, so if we select the oranges layer um, and if we press P again to show the position that's one of the properties we're concerned with and then if we hold down shift the other property we're going to apply to this one is rotation so shift R and you see we can now see position and rotation uh, if we move the playhead to uh, 10 frames which is the end of our animation select position and select rotation and again that will insert those two keyframes at, at that point move playhead to zero okay and then if we select the oh sorry the other thing I missed is we need to show the the oranges so again underneath the um, that dot icon at the top here we want to solo the oranges as well which means basically to show the oranges um, okay now I think with this what, what I could do is I could maybe have the oranges coming in from up above the stage so if I move them up uh, top stage right they can just be off the stage maybe um, and then set the rotation as well so I thought maybe we could rotate these um, and then if we set the rotation so if we go down to the rotation properties here click on the value and set that to 90 degrees and then if I just scrub the needle you see that they're moving and rotating 90 degrees at the same time and if I continue this process with the milk layer so if I solo the milk layer so we can see that um, and then we can apply we could apply a scale and a rotation to the milk so again if we press S for scale and hold down shift and R for rotation okay um, move the needle to 10 frames again so that's the end of our animation we set a keyframe by clicking on scale and rotation at, at uh, 10 frames then move the playhead back to zero and then we can use the anchor point uh, tool which is up here just make sure we're on the milk layer which we are select the anchor point tool and then we can actually move the anchor point itself so if we move the anchor point down to bottom right of the milk layer so the scale will um, and the rotation will be fixed around this anchor point rather than the center of the, the milk uh, and if we set rotation to uh, remembering to move the playhead to 10 frames sorry no I'll, I'll do that again playhead to zero sorry yeah we've moved the anchor point set rotation to 90 <coughs> okay and scale to zero okay and you'll see we get this animation where the the milk is uh, rotating into place and scaling at the same time okay and if we continue to the lettuce layer um, so we could uh, try uh, manipulating transparency on the lettuce layer if we make sure the playheads at zero we want to solo the lettuce layer okay um, and if we click on T that will show the transparency or opacity as it's called here um, playhead to zero select the opacity okay keyframe is at 100% at the moment the opacity is at 100% at the moment switch to zero Okay, we want to uh, adjust the scale as well. So on the lettuce layer, press uh, Shift S. Sorry, Shift S. Um, so we've got scale and opacity showing. <coughs> okay, so just a little recap on that. If I can press that layer, if I want to show opacity and scale, if I press uh, S for scale. 
and then shift T for opacity and remember when you want to show the second property you hold down shift okay play head to 10 uh, click on the scale um, timer to select it to insert a keyframe at 10 Uh, then play head back to zero. Select the anchor point tool if it's not already selected. Uh, if we move the anchor point down to the bottom right of the lettuce, you can hold down control, which will actually constrain that movement as well. Uh, if we set scale to say 50%, Okay, so we have our scale. Now at the moment you'll see that we can't see the lettuce because it's still transparent because we set we um, set the uh, transparency to zero, or the opacity to zero. So we just need to now make that become visible. So if we move the needle back to 10 frames and turn the uh, opacity back up to 100, you'll see that now We've got the uh, the lattice scaling and going from um, transparent to opaque. Okay, so if we move on to the juice layer. Okay, we want to solo it so we can see it. Uh, move, make sure the playhead is at ten. Uh, move the anchor point. So again, with the anchor point selection tool, if it's not already selected, move that down to the bottom again you can hold down control if we say go down to bottom right um, with the juice object uh, if we press R for rotate and shift S for scale we click on the timer for both okay move the playhead back to zero set rotation to 90 Okay, so we're starting off with a rotated um, juice bottle. Apply that change and it will automatically insert a keyframe. Uh, if we change scale to zero, okay, and then we can just scrub to check how that plays out. So that's okay, we've got another rotation there and a scale. And now finally we've got the last layer which is the bread. Now remember we can solo and unsolo layers if we want to just focus on one particular layer. So if we unsolo um, the other layers and just solo the bread then we can just focus in on that if we wanted to. Um, with the play, play head at 10 frames, okay just make sure you're actually clicked on the bread layer. Again with the anchor point selection tool um, we'll move the anchor point down to bottom left, so we're just rotating around that point or scaling around that point. Uh, play head to zero. Okay, and then we're going to scale, so if we press S. Sorry, play head to 10, should I say. Select the bread layer, press S for scale. Click on the timer next to scale to apply a keyframe. Play head back to zero. Uh, scale down to zero. Okay again that will insert automatically insert a keyframe. So we've just gone for a, a simple scale on the bread. Okay so if we um, if we just unsolo that, <clears throat> okay. So we just want to show all the layers now, so we can test out our animation so far. So again, if you just click on the the dot next to each of the layers to make them vis, make sure they're all visible. Um, so there we go; they're all visible now. If I scrub the needle, we can see that they're all there. 
uh, we press space bar remember we've constrained the play area to one frame so if we press space bar we can see how that plays out so that's okay we've got a range of different movement there dynamic movement okay so the final thing I'd like you to do now is experiment with uh, you know ch changing this animation experimenting with it position scale rotation transparency um, you know you could have the objects coming in from further off stage you know maybe maybe scaling them more uh, dynamically or rotating them more um, just have a play with the settings with, with adjusting them um, so you can just get for a feel for how that works okay so we're going to move on to the next stage now that I talked about so we've designed we've animated now we want to sequence what we've animated okay um, so first thing we've got the layers panel here uh, we've got lots of sub layers expanded here so we want to just uh, to compress this down for the time being so if we um, just click in the uh, layer panel and then press Control and A that will select all the layers okay and then if I just compress one of the layers you'll see it compresses them all just to neaten that layer view up now to two seconds rather than one okay so we've constrained the work area to two frames now um, so we want to start sequencing our layers now so the first thing is to um, again we can select all the layers control A we can move them just outside our two frame area we can then select in terms of sequence we want the basket layer appearing first uh, I'm not going to take it right to the beginning so we can see the background briefly at the beginning uh, so that looks okay uh, I'm then going to bring in the oranges and obviously they're going to they're going to come in decided they're going to come in shortly after the basket so we've got this kind of sequential aspect of the animation starting to take shape um, now what, what we want to do is we want to actually see the, those key frames that we created earlier uh, in relation to these layers so if I click on the basket layer and press U and on the oranges layer and press U you see it shows us the key frames for those uh, properties that we created earlier okay now I've decided that with the the oranges I want to just speed them up a little bit just feel like they're a little bit slow okay so if you remember as we did when we animated the plane we can select those the, the second set of keyframes here and just shift that in so the um, distance between those two sets of keyframes and the orange layer is shorter and therefore the animation is faster okay and then if we continue this process with the other layers so if I bring in the uh, the milk layer now again just slightly staggered here so it's coming in later than the others press U to expand and then I might decide I want this to come in more slowly so again I can increase the distance between the keyframes and continue that process with the others uh, now this is um, really though where you need to be reviewing your animation watching it back and this fine tuning is really the the art of animation you know where you start to make the 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 movement realistic or appealing or dynamic um, so this is really where you're fine tuning the movement okay okay and then we can continue this process selecting the, the layers adjusting the layer position on the timeline pressing U so we can see the, the keyframes adjusting the keyframes to fine-tune the, the speed okay the second set of keyframes um, so it's a question of scrubbing scrubbing the needle reviewing until you're happy with the speed the pace of the movement the, the movement of each object in relation to one another okay okay so finally when we're happy with that um, I'll let you just experiment with that a bit uh, when you're happy with that you can click on one of the layers press Control A to select all compress one of the layers compressing them all and we're back to uh, the view that we begun with okay so we're going to add um, one more thing to these layers which is the motion blur um, so if you just click in the, the uh, layer panel here mouse over this icon here the three circles overlapping that's a motion blur you can just click and drag down so that's applied to all the layers apart from the background 
Okay, and you'll see that once this is added, it adds a real uh, um, element of realism to the movement. So if we press space bar, you'll see that we get this kind of slight blur as the objects are moving. If I just slow that down a bit, you can see now this blur applied to the individual objects to just emphasize this uh, illusion of movement. Okay. Okay, so the final thing here, if you remember, we constrained our composition to uh, two frames. Uh, we don't, we've got all this, these three, um, sorry, two seconds, should I say. We've got three seconds of extra uh, animation where nothing happens here. So we want to trim it down to these, these two seconds that we've been working on. So the easy way to do that is if you place the mouse inside the work, the defined work area here, right click, and if you select um, trim comp to work area, and that will trim it down to two uh, seconds. Okay, uh, and there you have, you can play it through, and that'll show you exactly the duration of the animation with our motion blur and the sequenced animation applied. Okay, so again, have a go at experimenting with this, tweaking it, that's really what makes uh, the difference between a really outstanding animation um, and an average one. Okay, that's that.